Have you ever questioned the reality that you live in? What if everything around us is some kind of advanced supercomputer generated simulation? Sounds crazy, right? Well, this video dives into the simulation theory in which it states that we're in some kind of simulation or video game that we're not even aware of. And this simulation is so advanced that it has certain codes and certain programming that we may think is normal, but it's all part of the simulation. So I want you to sit back, get ready, because this is a lot of mind blowing information. Let's dive in. What if we're all living inside an artificial, computer-generated simulation? Most of us assume that the world around us is real. We take it for granted, assuming that everything we interact with is the true essence of reality and not an illusion created by someone else. After all, this world is all we've ever known. We can explain how it works using science and philosophy and other fields of knowledge. Think about it. Our universe operates on precise mathematical laws like a meticulously programmed system. But who or what could be behind this grand simulation? Are we the creation of a highly advanced civilization? An experiment in a cosmic laboratory? Well, let's find out. This is the simulation theory. The idea that we live in a simulation has been talked about for hundreds of years. It goes by many names. Simulation theory, simulation reality, simulation hypothesis. But what exactly does this mean? The premise is that everything we perceive is real, including us and the entire universe, could be part of an artificial simulation, like a high resolution video game. Reality is just an advanced computer generated simulation in which we simulate life, love, laughter, and work as per the program's commands. The theory further states, everything we see, feel, taste, or touch is because of an advanced supercomputer. Scientists and researchers who believe in the simulation theory states that it's more likely that we're living in a simulation than not. And the more they try to disprove this theory, the more evidence they end up finding. Well, let's dive in and see. In 2003, philosopher Nick Bostrom introduced his famous simulation theory in which he explores the probability that we're all living inside an artificial simulation. Bostrom discusses how a future society could become so technologically advanced that its inhabitants learn how to generate complex artificial worlds using powerful computers. And if this is possible, then the probability that we're living inside a computer simulation is extremely high. Bostrom proposes a theory known as a simulation trilemma. He goes on to say that one of the following possibilities must be true. Possibility number one. The human species is very likely to become extinct before reaching a post-human stage. In this scenario, Bostrom argues that civilizations, including our own, might never advance technologically to a stage where they possess the ability to create highly realistic simulations. According to this view, our world is not a simulation because no civilization has the means or knowledge to construct such a complex virtual reality. Possibility number two. Post-human civilizations lack the desire or interest in running simulations. In this theory, Bostrom proposes that advanced civilizations capable of creating simulations might simply lack the inclination to do so. They may have different priorities or find little value in creating virtual worlds like ours. And possibility number three, we are almost certainly living in a simulation. The most thought-provoking possibility put forth by Bostrom is that we are in fact living within a simulated reality. He argues that if civilizations reach a post-human stage and possess the desire to create simulations, it is highly likely that numerous simulations would be generated. Consequently, the odds of us being in one true base reality would be exceedingly slim. According to this view, our perceptions and experiences are nothing more than simulated constructs and the true nature of reality lies beyond the confines of our simulated existence. Now, if you've never heard of the simulation theory, this may all sound far-fetched to you, but many well-respected researchers and scientists believe that we are indeed living in a simulated reality. Bostrom goes on to say that the evidence for simulation theory is all around us. All we have to do is look, but how do we find it? So, if we live in a simulated reality, there's bound to be glitches, right? Well, Philip K. Dick, a renowned researcher and science fiction writer, dived into captivating themes such as alternate realities and the nature of existence. He firmly believed in the existence of other realms that occasionally intersect with our own reality. 
According to Philip K. Dick, these intersections are evidenced by phenomena like the Mandela Effect and Deja Vu. The Mandela Effect refers to a situation in which a large mass of people believes that an event occurred when it did not. The term originated in 2009 by Fiona Broom after she discovered that she, along with a number of others, believed that Nelson Mandela had died in the 1980s in prison when he actually died in 2013. What about Mirror Mirror on the Wall? I'm pretty sure you've heard of this, right? In the classic Disney film, Snow White, the quote is often remembered as Mirror Mirror on the Wall, who's the fierce of them all. However, the line is actually Magic Mirror on the Wall, who's the fierce one of all. What about in Star Wars, one of the most famous movies of all time? Darth Vader says, Luke, I am your father. Well, no, the actual line is, No, I am your father. The number of US states. Some people recall the United States having 51 or even 52 states rather than the actual count of 50 states. Now, this one, I'm still confused because I distinctly remember saying, life is like a box of chocolates from the film Forrest Gump. But the quote in reality is actually, life was like a box of chocolates. There's a lot more of these out there that just blows my mind. But why do we remember some of these things? Philip K. Dick, states that this can be a glitch in a simulated world, just like a glitch in a video game. He goes on to say that when we experience these effects such as deja vu and the Mandela effect, something in our simulated universe changed and a new timeline branch of the current one. He states, We are living in a computer program reality and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. We would have the overwhelming impression that we were reliving the present deja vu. Perhaps in precisely the same way, hearing the same words, saying the same words. I submit that these impressions are valid and significant. And I will even say this, such an impression is a clue that in some past time point, a variable was changed, reprogrammed, as it were, and that because of this, an alternative world branched off. Now, I want you to take a look at your surroundings. Everything is in mathematical symmetry. Mathematical symmetry, according to researchers, is just more evidence that can prove we live in a simulated universe, that everything has a mathematical code. One famous researcher, Brian Whitworth, states that the presence of mathematical symmetry provides compelling evidence for the existence of an underlying code or programming within the fabric of our universe. This code governs the laws of physics, the behavior of matter and energy, and the intricate patterns we observe in the natural world. These patterns often characterized by mathematical symmetries. One notable example is the Golan Ratio, also known as phi, a mathematical ratio approximately equal to 1.618. It is derived from a unique relationship between two values, where the ratio of the sum of the two values to the larger value is the same as the ratio of the larger value to the smaller one. We see the golden ratio in nature, plants, animals, weather patterns, and even in outer space. But what exactly is the golden ratio? The golden ratio is derived from a famous and very simple mathematical sequence called the Fibonacci sequence. The sequence begins with the numbers 0 and 1, and we just add them together. Every number that follows in the pattern will be found by adding the two numbers before it. So for example, 0 plus 1 equals 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5. But the interesting thing about this pattern is that we see this repetitive sequence in nature and everywhere as if we're inside some sort of intricate program. Look at leaf arrangements for example. Many plants exhibit a specific pattern in the arrangements of their leaves along the stem. This pattern often follows the Fibonacci sequence or the golden ratio. For instance, in plants like sunflowers, you can observe spirals of leaves wrapping around the stem, with the number of spirals being consecutive Fibonacci numbers. We also see it in flower petals. The number of petals in certain flowers are often Fibonacci numbers. For instance, some lilies have petals in counts of 3, 5, or 8, which are Fibonacci numbers. Similarly, flowers like daisies and marigolds often have petal counts of 13, 21, or 34 which are consecutive Fibonacci numbers. Look at tree branching. The branching patterns of trees can exhibit Fibonacci numbers. The main trunk often splits into two branches, which then splits into two more, and so on. 
with the number of branches at each level often being a Fibonacci number. Even in animals we see this. The starfish has two manifestations of Fibonacci. It has the five arms as well as a pentagon shape that reflects the golden ratio. Other examples are the horns of a ram, the tail of a seahorse, and the shells of snails. We continue to see this pattern everywhere in the galaxies around us, mother nature, everywhere. But why? Well. If you consider this to be a simulated reality, then some proponents suggest that the presence of mathematical patterns, including the golden ratio, could be a result of deliberate programming within the simulated reality. After all, if you were to program a simulation, wouldn't you want to have a common code that governs everything, keeping everything in order? In the movie The Matrix, Neo is offered a choice between truth and illusion. If he takes the blue pill, he will return to his old life where everything seems normal. If he takes the red pill, he will wake up to see the world as it truly is. Neo then chooses the red pill. When he wakes up, he realizes that he's been asleep in a pod where he had only dreamt he was living a normal life. The truth is, he and all the other humans were prisoners of sophisticated machines. The machines created the illusion of a normal life for the sleeping humans so they could harvest their energy. Neo is just a character in the movie. The Matrix may be science fiction, but scientists are beginning to think that we may also be living inside of an illusion. Some have even gone as far as saying that we're living inside of a video game. Elon Musk, who is one of the most influential people in the world of technology, says that there's only one in a billion chance that we are not living in a simulation. Musk says that technology is advancing so fast that soon we'll be able to create games or simulations that are indistinguishable from reality. That means we could create entire artificial worlds. Sounds familiar? This sounds like virtual reality to me. Video games offer experiences that rely on active participation of players where their actions and decisions shape the progression and the outcomes within the virtual world. In these interactive digital environments, players act as observers who directly influence the unfolding events. Interestingly, the concept of observation in video games align with the simulation theory suggesting that everything within a simulated world exists as a potential until observed. In order to provide a smooth experience, video games render only the parts of the environment that are being observed by the player at any given time. What lies beyond their field of view remains dormant, awaiting observation. Scientists are now suggesting that reality may be malleable and influenced by conscious observation or interaction. They say they can prove it with a simple experiment. This experiment shows that reality is just like a video game. It is influenced by the observer. The observer is then able to create the reality they want. It reveals that the mere act of observation has the power to influence and even create the very reality one desires. The double split experiment shows exactly that. So the double split experiment works like this. If you fire particles in a straight line at a screen with a slit on the other side of the screen, you expect to see a clump or particles together. Now, if you try this with waves, you expect to see a normal wave pattern. Well, this is where things get weird. When you add another slit to the screen, each slit creates its own wave and acts as individual slits. But when they interact with each other, they become one again, creating a pattern called the interference pattern. Stay with me. So, so far, particles through two slits create a clumping pattern and waves through two slits create an interference pattern. Now, electrons. Electrons have more mass, so it's a bit of matter. And what are we? Matter. Now, if you fire electrons through two slits, you expect to see two clumping patterns, right? Well, wrong. We see the wave interference pattern, which should not be happening. When scientists found this, they stated the electrons are just colliding with each other, causing this pattern. But in the 1960s, scientists decided to take a look at the experiment again. So they started firing one electron at a time at the slits, but they still saw the wave interference pattern. So they wanted to see what exactly was causing this. So they then added a detector to watch the electrons as they passed through the slits. Well, this is where things started becoming spooky for the scientists. When the detectors were in use, the interference pattern went away and it showed clumping patterns instead. But when they took away the detectors, the wave interference pattern started showing on the screen and set up the clumping patterns. It was as if the particles know that they were being observed. Then physicist John Wheeler came up with an experiment to go even deeper. He called it the delayed choice experiment. And this is how it works. 
particles are shot through the double slit, but the detector that is there is not activated until the electrons pass through the slit, but right before they hit the screen. So here's what happened. The particles shot out like waves, passed through the slit as waves, but when it was observed right before it hit the second screen, instead of it being waves, it turned into particles again. Even though the particles shot out as waves, passed through the slits as waves, the moment that the individual decided to observe the particles through the slits, the particles decided to change their state from a wave into particles. The electrons changed their state by going back in time. Physicist John Wheeler stated, The delayed choice experiment reveals that particles behave as waves until the very moment of observation. The particles exist in a superposition, simultaneously passing through both slits and interfering with themselves, forming a wave pattern of probabilities. This phenomenon shows that particles can change their past behavior based on future observations. The double split experiment reveals something truly amazing. Our conscious observation has the power to shape reality just like in a video game where our choices determine the storyline. This experiment suggests that we can create our own paths in life. Every potential outcome exists as a wave of light and possibilities awaiting our conscious observation to collapse it into definitive reality. Nothing is set in stone or predetermined. Instead, our thoughts and intentions become the driving force that brings possibilities to life. It's like we're the authors of our own story with the ability to transform abstract ideas into tangible experiences. So, like I mentioned before, if you were to create a simulated reality, it needs to run smoothly, right? You will need to code it to fix itself for any minor glitches or random errors. To achieve this, you would have to incorporate something called error correcting codes into the game's programming. These codes work behind the scenes, constantly monitoring and correcting any potential errors or inconsistencies that may arise during gameplay. They ensure that the virtual world remains stable, consistent, and immersive for other players. Now, let's take a moment to consider our own reality. If our own world is indeed a sophisticated simulation similar to a vast and intricate video game, wouldn't it make sense for it to include error correcting codes as well? Well, we do. These codes serve as a fundamental mechanism within the simulation, maintaining the integrity and coherence of our own reality. They would minimize computational load by simulating only the necessary aspects and correcting any anomalies or inconsistencies when observed or measured. We can observe error correcting codes like mechanisms in biological systems. Take DNA for example, which serves as the blueprint for life. It has built-in error correction systems that ensure the accuracy of genetic information during replication. These systems work similarly to error correction codes, safeguarding the integrity of DNA and preventing mutations. The presence of such error correction mechanisms in both human design systems and nature underscores their importance in maintaining a reliable information transmission. Look at homeostasis. The human body maintains internal stability through error correcting feedback loops. For example, in temperature regulation, if your body temperature deviates from the desired range, the body activates mechanisms like sweating or shivering to restore temperature back to normal. This feedback system allows the body to continually monitor and correct any imbalances to ensure optimal functioning. We can see this in animals. Marine animals or mammals navigate the vast oceanic environment during migration or foraging activities. They rely on a combination of sensory cues including magnetic fields, celestial cues, and ocean currents. If they encounter any deviations or errors in their navigation, these animals can adjust their paths by sensing changes in environmental cues and correcting their course accordingly. The presence of error correcting mechanisms, both in human design systems and nature, highlights their crucial role in ensuring reliable information transmission. In essence, error correcting codes may serve as a fundamental mechanism that upholds the integrity and coherence of our reality. So these codes would work diligently behind the scenes, constantly monitoring and correcting any glitches or random errors that may arise, just like a simulated video game. So are we in a simulation? We are living in a computer programmed reality and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs.